is video three of the Explorer unit. This slide is talking about <laughs> this slide is talking about the before. What's going on before we kind of start? Important thing: the emperor was a figurehead. These daimyo had the power. This is known as the Warring States period. Um, Japan is divided in, up into a bunch of small areas, and the daimyo, the warrior chieftain, new leaders have the power. It should remind you a lot of European feudalism. They've got their castle. So that Warring State period, where Japan is fairly fractionalized, lasts for a little bit of time until Oda Nobunga comes in. Powerful ruler comes in. He seizes power of Kyoto and starts to consolidate or bring Japan back together. His best general, Toyoto Hideyoshi, is his replacement. And he actually invades Korea to try to make Japan bigger. So you go Warring States period, Oda, Toyotami. And then in 1600, Togawa Ayushu unites Japan. He becomes Shogun, which means the most powerful daimyo. So rebellion is still a problem. So he comes up with this brilliant idea. He says, every year, the daimyo must spend a year in Edo, in the capital. What that does is pulls the daimyo out of their home provinces and weakens their power. And he starts a new time period called the Tog Togawa Shogunate, which lasts for the next 200 years. Unifies Japan, gets control of the daimyo. He moves the capital. They become Confucian, heavy taxes. There's a shift from urban from rural to urban during Tagawa society. Tagawa shogunate it's believed that they had to protect the people. Very, very structured. Again, undergoing this shift from rural to urban. Women did enjoy a little bit of employment opportunity. Culture thrive. Shoguns were the most powerful daimyo, samurai warriors, but fez peasants and artisans were four-fifths of the population. So the upper 20% were these guys. Merchants were at the bottom. You'll see why in a minute. Tagawa culture, literature is important, new style of entertainment developed. So again, the Tagawa culture is, let's go back old school, let's get Japan controlled. So notice paintings of classic Japanese literature are popular. Samurais are forced to attend these dramas called No, and they're based on tragic themes. What takes up or what come, becomes popular is haiku and kabuki, two forms of art that prove that Japan is isolated, that they're kind of creating their own forms of art. They're not connecting with anything going on in Europe. Here you see the structure. Notice at the bottom, merchants and craftsmen. Farmers in the middle. Samyar, Damyo, Shogun. Remember this... Togawa period is going to be about 250 years. Farmers are producing. They're doing well, even though they're getting taxed. They're hating it. Part of that is because of this Confucian idea. This is a pretty good slide worth studying. Part of the problem, or part of the interesting part is, Confucius always said it was more honorable to be a farmer than a merchant. Farmers are higher up, but they're getting taxed. So some of them are pretty miserable. So what happens is some of the people who lived on farms start moving to cities. This is where it gets interesting. Initially, Europeans were welcome. Portuguese come in. And partly the reason Tagawa and the other shoguns were able to get power is because they were getting firearms from the Portuguese. Forts had to be constructed to avoid cannons. The Portuguese also brought clocks, eyeglasses, tobacco, firearms. Obviously, the daimyos are like, enough with the clocks, give me the guns. Um, at first, Japan's eager. Next coming after that are the missionaries. Um, some of the Japanese leaders get upset with the conversions. They believe that there's rebellions being caused by the missionaries. So the missionaries either get exiled or killed. The Japanese eventually become entirely or attempt to become entirely Buddhist. So again, the story of Japan, open window. Hey, well, give me your guns, give me your clocks. And then when the... Um, rebellions happen, that window slams shut. 
All right. 300,000 conversions. Christian missionaries were kicked out of China and Japan. Had all Japanese had to demonstrate some faithfulness to some branch of Buddhism. So they become isolated. 1639, the closed country policy. The shogunate only trade out of Nagasaki, and they'll only trade with the Dutch and the Chinese. Japan remains closed for nearly 200 more years. In fact, it is illegal to leave Japan because it is a closed country. We already talked about this. Jesuits, Franciscans, Dominicans all come, they convert, and then they either get kicked out or killed. So again, open window, closed window. This is an example of how the window is closed. Japan becomes very... So the good part about the closed country policy is Japan becomes very self-sufficient. The bad news is they do not get to benefit of some of the European product. 